What's going on guys? In this video, we are gonna build this planter. I am calling it the Tiki Planter. I don't know why, that's just what came to mind when I was naming it. Anyway, I've built a couple different planters on this channel, but I think this one's my favorite. You guys have been asking for plans, and I finally took the time. I learned SketchUp. Well, I am in the process of learning SketchUp. Damn rooster. I do have plans available for this, I'm happy to say. So I'm happy to be designing my own thing from the ground up. And building some more things and sharing them with you and making plans available. But anyway, I think this is my favorite planter yet that I've built. It's just got a really super timeless look to it. And the best part... And the best part about this is it's really easy to build. It's cheap to build. So I've incorporated fence pickets as well as landscape timbers. The landscape timbers are super cheap. Same with the fence pickets. So <laughs> this planter is going to run you about 10 bucks in material to make. Alrighty, let's run into the garage. Let's do this. All right, so right off the bat, before we get started, I just want to say this planter build is best to build in increments of three because the eight foot landscape timber you buy for the lag portion of the planter, one eight foot timber is going to be enough to build three planters. So it's best to buy one eight foot timber along with nine fence pickets, and that's going to give you three total planters. For the case of this video, I am just going to build one, but if you want to batch these out, it's definitely best and most efficient to build in quantities of three. All right guys, I got my three pickets and just the first thing I like to do before you start cutting them into the lengths is just give them a light sanding. These are rough cut, so you really just wanna get the roughness off of them and make sure you get on the edges too. All right, we are all sanded up here. We're ready to start cutting these cut lengths. I'm gonna leave the cut lengths in the description and also I'm gonna be building this by the plans that I made uh, they're really, really detailed plans. It's going to have an optimized cut list, how to cut the landscape timber legs, uh, and just a step-by-step -step tutorial. So if you're going to build a bunch of these, I highly recommend getting these plans. I'll leave them in the description. I spent a lot of time making them, and you're supporting the channel with every purchase of plans. So I appreciate that. Let's jump into this. With every fresh picket you start with, always cut off that raw edge. Just a eighth inch, it doesn't need to be any more. It just gives you a lot cleaner edge. All right, so initially there's just three cut lengths that you gotta do. You gotta do one at 15 and a half, eight of them at 13 and a half, and seven of them at 11 and a half. The one piece at 15 and a half, I just measure and cut it. But on my continuous cuts, the 13 and a half, I need eight of them. I set a stop block for that as well as the 11 and a half where I need seven of them. This just makes quick and accurate work of cutting them down. Alrighty, so now you should have one at 15 and a half, eight of them at 13 and a half, and seven of them at 11 and a half. Now we gotta jump in to the landscape timbers, which is gonna make up our legs. Like I said, there's enough to do three planters. I'm just building one right now. I gotta cut two of them at 15 and a half inches out of this. All right, cut lengths are all set. Now we can head over to the table saw. All right, so first you're gonna take your 15 and a half length as well as one 11 and a half length. These are gonna be our top trim pieces. So we're gonna set the fence to two inches and rip four of them to two inches. Okay, now take four 11 and a half pieces, and out of each one, you're gonna wanna cut them at two and three quarters. So this is gonna give you eight of them at two and three quarters. This is gonna be your cross connector pieces. All right, and to finish off our rip cuts for now, take four of them at 13 and a half, and rip each of these down to four and seven eighths. This is gonna make up your narrow side walls. With what's left over out of the pickets, you should have four 13 and a half, 
and two at 11 and a half. We're keeping these the full width. So no need to rip them down. Also, these cutoffs you just did, save them. These are gonna be your lip supports that we put in at the end. All right, now all we got left is the landscape timbers. Uh, these will vary a little bit in size, but basically all we wanna do is have the flat portion of these on your table. The rounded portion will be against the fence and we're just gonna rip these in half. This is gonna make up our legs. So in my case, I have my blade centered at one and seven eighths. So just, it'll be near around that for you, but just double check it and you should be good to go. Raise your saw blade all the way up and we're just cutting it directly in half. Just be careful making these cuts. As I said, the flat reference mark is against the table but you do have a rounded edge that's against the fence. So just make sure most of your pressure is down towards the table. I've never had a problem, but being that it's not a flat reference against the fence, just take your time and take it easy. Alrighty, time to start assembling. So just to go over what we got, four legs, four wide side walls, four narrow side walls, eight cross connectors, your trim pieces, and then your floorboards. To start, we're gonna take two narrow side walls and two cross connectors. You'll need a brad nailer with one inch brad nails, or if you don't have a brad nail, get one inch finish nails, hammer and nail it, old school. Alrighty, so it's a super simple first step. You just take your two narrow sidewalls, put them together. All we're gonna do is glue towards the top and the bottom of them. Make sure you got an exterior grade glue. And then all we're gonna do is take your cross connectors and you're gonna put it flush on top and bottom. And then just by feeling an eye Kind of just make sure it's centered. Make sure each lip on each side here and here is about the same. It should be roughly seven eighths. And then just brad nail it. Flip it around. And then you're gonna do the same thing here. Don't worry about the nail holes out here. This is gonna be the inside of your planter and you ain't gonna see it. Now set that aside and just repeat on your next two narrow side walls with two new cross connectors. Okay, now with each of the panels you just made, all you're gonna wanna do is take two of your lag assemblies, glue here and here, Make sure it's flush on the top up here. Optionally, you can leave one inch brads. If you want a little more holding power, you can switch to inch and a quarter brad nails here, just to give it a little more holding power while the glue dries. So now this is the outside of your box. Just make sure you clean up this glue squeeze out. Now just repeat that with your other panel. Okay, we got our two panels made. Now all we're gonna do is simply connect these together. And how we're gonna do that, grab your remaining four cross connectors, eighth inch drill bit, and you're just gonna wanna make some pilot holes so that these don't split. I do one on each end. Grab one of your panels, flip it over, and all we're gonna do is glue them on to these cross connectors. I'm using eight by one inch and a quarter wood screws. Exterior, make sure they're exterior. And as I said, I'm just putting one screw in each and just make sure it's flush on the top up here. Next up, you probably guessed it. Connect the ends of these to these. And these ones, you just don't want to glue all at once, all together. 
Next is now take your four wide side panels. These are the ones we didn't rip down at all. All right, I moved you guys a little closer here so you can see, but basically all we're doing here is connecting the wide side panels. If you did switch to an inch and a quarter brad nails, now is the time to switch back to one inch brad nails. Otherwise, you'll blow through the inside, which isn't a big deal because it's in the inside, but you would still be able to tell at the top of the planner. And basically all we're gonna do is split the difference between these two panels, which is roughly gonna be eighth inch gap between each one. And all I like to do here is brad nail from the outside, but I only do two on each end for the outside. Make sure you're flush at the top. All right, now because we only put two brad nails from the outside, I like to bring it back up here, put one of your floorboard pieces down here to have some pressure to push against, and nail a couple from the inside too, just to give it extra holding power. All right, now I'm gonna install the top trim pieces. I always start with the 11 and a half trim pieces, the smaller ones. Nail those on the front and back side and make sure your reveal's showing right here. If you aren't gonna do the optional rope handles, which I'm gonna be installing next, your best bet is to pre-drill and screw these down with inch and a quarter screws, because this is more than likely where people are gonna be lifting it from if you don't have those handles. And screws will just give it more holding power rather than brad nails. Now you put your long trim on and these are gonna go onto this right here. That'll go right over, there'll be no reveal, we're gonna add that next. All right, so like I said, you've got a reveal right here from that cross connector, but the way the top trim goes on, that's flush with this other cross connector. So out of the strips, that you had from ripping down on the table saw, you've got some scraps. You cut these to length. Typically, it's 10 and a quarter. Brad nail those in right here, so it'll create a reveal on all four sides. All right, now the only two pieces you should have left are the two full width pieces that are 11 and a half inches long. These are gonna be your floorboards. And these are gonna set on your bottom cross connector pieces. So I just put a bead of glue on each cross connector it's gonna hit. And pop them in. Then as the glue dries, you can just tack it down with your brad nailer, if you can get it in there. If not, you can screw it down. Alrighty guys, if you decide to install the rope handles, which I think gives it a really unique look. It kind of sets it off. Gives it kind of another selling point, a unique look that compared to others, makes it look a little better. So you're gonna need some half inch sisal rope, it's called. It's just kind of like a decorative rope. You'll need two lengths at two foot each. And all you're gonna wanna do is to determine the front of yours, the rounded portion of the legs, I like as the front. So therefore, on the flat side, that's where I put my handles. So basically all you're gonna wanna do is you go through your wide panels, through the cross connectors inside, and I basically center them in the panel and center it in the cross connector. There's no specific placement for it. And just a half inch drill bit through. Better to have these on when you're drilling instead of on your head. Take a piece, put it through, and tie a knot right at the end. It's pretty self-explanatory. Go through that hole, tie another knot on this end to tighten them, push it against, and just pull, and it'll tighten the knot. And then there you go. 
All right, so for finishing, I just like to take this Thompson's water seal. This is just clear. You can get stained versions of this too. I prefer to mix my own stain, so I use a little bit of stain in here and then pour this in with the stain and mix it. I just take a cheap brush and just brush it on just to seal this up. There's all kinds of things you can finish this with. This is just what I picked up from my local home center. And I used it on some planters that have been sitting out in the rain for a while and it, this stuff works pretty good. It beads off the water really nicely. There you have it guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to share pictures with me if you decide to build them. If you purchase the plans, thank you. Let me know what you think about them down in the comments below. And I hope you enjoyed the video. I got another one queued up for you right here that I think you'll like next. So, catch you in the next video.